Imagine staring deep into the universe and realizing, at once, that it is staring back. That is precisely what researchers felt when the James Webb Space Telescope, the strongest I ever made, launched into outer space and found something completely unexpected. This wasn't just another distant galaxy or a stunning nebula to include in NASA's image gallery. No. What Webb found was a set of anomalies, patterns, and signals that defied every rule we believed we understood about the cosmos. At first glance, it all seemed random. But the more they looked, the more it began to feel deliberate, structured some would even say intelligent. For decades, we believed that the universe was indifferent to our existence, an icy, interminable void governed by physics and randomness. But what if we've been wrong all along? What if, hidden in the silence of deep space, there are messages waiting to be found messages that we were never supposed to see? Today, we dive into the latest data from the James Webb Space Telescope data so shocking, so unprecedented, that some astronomers are beginning to ask the unthinkable. Are we finally witnessing proof that we're not alone? The journey began with an unexpected anomaly close to home. Webb was pointed toward Neptune, one of the ice colossi at the outer limits of our solar system, a planet so far away and cold that it frequently appears frozen in time and space. However, Webb saw something that changed decades of scientific understanding. Compared to the information gathered by the flyby of Voyager 2 in 1989 and by recent Earth-based telescopes, Neptune's upper atmosphere had dropped in temperature significantly. Not over millennia or centuries, but within the last few decades. The readings made no sense. Parts of the atmosphere had cooled by nearly 10 degrees Celsius without any clear cause. Solar cycles didn't explain it. Internal heat fluctuations didn't either. And here's the unsettling part. Webb also discovered unusual shifts in Neptune's magnetosphere. Subtle, but real like a still heartbeat that we never knew was beating. Could an external force be influencing the planet? A passing gravitational anomaly? A change in the amount of dark matter? Or is something even stranger happening something that silently affects planets across unimaginable distances? The data opened the first door, and behind it was more than ice. It was mystery. While the anomaly around Neptune stirred anxiety, what Webb discovered in the TRAPPIST-1 system was enough to force researchers to reevaluate their entire approach to exoplanetary science. TRAPPIST-1, located just 39 light years away, is already famous for hosting seven rocky planets, three of which orbit within the system's habitable zone. But Webb didn't just confirm their potential, it revealed something far more profound. Employing infrared spectroscopy, Webb identified the unmistakable spectral fingerprints of water vapor in the atmospheres of at least two of those planets, TRAPPIST-1d and TRAPPIST-1e. And this wasn't just trace amounts the data suggested dense, humid environments, possibly including cloud systems similar to Earth's. Combined with temperature profiles and orbital resonance patterns, the most likely scenario is this deep, global oceans, stable and ancient. Even more astonishing was the detection of molecular markers and compounds resembling ozone compounds that often have connections to biological processes. It's not proof of life, but it's as close as we've ever come to finding the right conditions for it. Not once, but twice, onto planets in the same star system. Imagine it. A miniature solar system that contains not just multiple Earth-like worlds circling quietly in the darkness, but worlds that Webb has now shown us are more than theoretical targets. They are real, vibrant, and potentially alive. While the revelations near our cosmic neighborhood were already staggering, Webb had its eyes on something far more ancient. In one of its deepest surveys, it captured light from a galaxy known as Jade's GSZ-1301 of the earliest known, formed just 330 million years after the Big Bang. But it wasn't just the galaxy's existence that puzzled researchers, it was the Lyman Alpha radiation it emitted, a frequency usually absorbed by clouds of neutral hydrogen in the early universe. And yet, this signal was far too strong, far too clear, as if the hydrogen had already been ionized, allowing the light to travel unimpeded. 
This completely overturns what we thought we knew about the epic of reionization the era when the universe transitioned from darkness to light. If this galaxy emitted such radiation at such a time, it suggests that something else could have sped up that process something enormous or sophisticated. Was it just the footprint of natural variation? Or something more deliberate, like early galactic engineering or an unknown energy process that ignited the universe before it was ready? The implications are staggering. It no longer merely concerns what happened. It's about why and who if anyone, was present to bring it about. As the telescope shifted its gaze to white dwarf system stars that had already died, scientists expected only ruin, silence, and debris. But that's not what Webb found. Instead, it discovered worlds that refused to die. In the system of WD1856 plus 534, Webb found a huge gas planet orbiting just a few million kilometers from the dead star. This shouldn't be possible. The transformation of a sun into a white dwarf typically destroys everything nearby. However, there was this planet not only intact, but apparently in equilibrium. What stunned researchers the most was what they saw in the planet's upper atmosphere. Webb's instruments picked up traces of vaporized water, sulfur compounds, and other chemical markers that suggested atmospheric regeneration. Somehow, the planet had adapted to survive the death of its host star. This changes everything. The traditional premise of life and habitability, the belief that once a star dies, so too does any opportunity for life around it may no longer be true. But what if that's not true at all? What happens if there are ecosystems or civilizations built around dying stars, adapted to dwindling light and supported by alternative sources of energy? If some planets can survive death, then perhaps other forms of life can as well. And suddenly, white dwarfs, which were once icons of cosmic climaxes, may be the best places to look for intelligent life enduring an ancient world's ashes. While Webb has been uncovering the deep cosmos, it's also been turning its attention to the shadowy corners of our own solar system. One of its recent focal points, the outer moons of Uranus and Neptune, satellites long believed to be dormant, cold rocks with little scientific interest. But what Webb discovered told a very different story. Through infrared mapping, the telescope detected thermal signatures on several small moons that shouldn't have any internal activity at all. Minuscule deviation satellites like Hippocamp and Despina displayed heat patterns far above the expected baseline, indicating geological or cryovolcanic activity beneath their icy surfaces. Even more perplexing, Webb's spectrometers found hints of complex carbon compounds on their surfaces, possible organic precursors. The question immediately arose, how could such small frozen bodies orbiting so far from the sun maintain internal energy for billions of years? Some theorize the presence of radioactive decay. Others suggest tidal heating, but neither explains the organization level in the compounds found, which leads to a third option, seeding from outside. Could something have delivered these compounds? Could these moons be relics of something previous? Web sensors then caught something no one expected from a galaxy well known for decades. Messier 82, also called the Cigar Galaxy. Astronomers already cataloged this galaxy as a starburst zone, intensely active, filled with supernovae and stars forming at an abnormal rate. But now James Webb found something deeper, a pulse in the infrared, repeating at fixed intervals coming from its center. Not noise, not interference, a beacon. This infrared signal had structure, mathematical spacing, rhythm, and duration consistent with artificial modulation. Though no official conclusions have been drawn, some scientists have worked behind the scenes and already compared the pattern to early templates for SETI searches for alien transmissions. Is it the result of a natural phenomenon with a lot of energy, like a rotating neutron star? Possibly, but nothing in the visible or X-ray spectrum matches the signature, which raises an unsettling possibility. What if we're seeing the decay trail of something that once transmitted a signal, not a message to us, but one we were never meant to intercept? 
Remember Tabby's star, which is also called KIC 8462852, the strange celestial body whose light fluctuated in unexpected ways, sparking speculation about alien megastructures. Webb took a closer look. What it found didn't debunk the mystery, it deepened it. Webb's precise photometric data revealed that the dimming events were not the result of dust, debris, or comets. Instead, thin, opaque objects seemed to pass in front of the star in geometrically consistent intervals, objects that were flat, angular, possibly enormous. The fluctuations proposed structures orbiting in layers or swarms. Natural explanations are still on the table, like unusual ring systems of planets, but nothing so far explains the pattern with complete satisfaction. Webb's thermal sensors also picked up waste heat in the surrounding region, a small, steady infrared glow that doesn't match the star's output as if something was harvesting energy and radiating the leftovers. The term Dyson Swarm is once again being whispered, not as science fiction, but as a legitimate working hypothesis. Lastly, James Webb turned its optics to a Bell 2744, the Pandora's Cluster. This chaotic grouping of galaxies has long fascinated astronomers due to its gravitational lensing, allowing us to see galaxies from the earliest universe. But this time, something unexpected appeared through the lens. In one part of the observation, shadows moved across a background galaxy, not once, but repeatedly during prolonged exposures. These were not instrumental errors. They were actual occult events, which means something moved in front of the distant light source. But here's the mystery. Nothing visible cast those shadows. Whatever passed through that lens did not emit light, did not reflect it. It was only known through what it blocked. Based on the speed, size, and recurrence, Webb's team believes these objects might be massive yet dark, possibly stealth satellites or, more exotically, non-reflective megastructures. This is not simply a matter of missing matter. This is something more organized, more mechanical. Perhaps a technology that hides from us using the very physics we thought we understood. What the James Webb Telescope is revealing isn't just beauty, science, or wonder. It's something deeper, something almost forbidden. A series of signs scattered across space and time, each one challenging the boundaries of what we know and whispering the same silent question. What if the universe has never been empty? What if we've been observed all along, from the cold shadows of Neptune's moons to the structured pulses of distant galaxies, from the possible oceans on Trappist worlds to silhouettes moving behind cosmic curtains? Webb hasn't just opened a new eye to the cosmos. It's peeled back a veil, a veil we didn't know was there, one that may have been put in place for a reason. And now there's no turning back. We stand on the edge of a discovery that could redefine our species, a realization that the universe is possibly aware in addition to being vast, observing, reacting, or even issuing a warning. However, here's the truth. This is merely the beginning. If this video sparked something in you, if you felt that chill, that sense that something big is coming, then don't let it end here. Get on board now so you don't miss out on what the Webb Telescope finds next. Comment below, what do you think is available? And please share this video with someone who's ready to question everything.